Welcome back, boys and girls. It is week 11 of the college football season. It, and I, again, I've, it, it doesn't really matter what week of the Carly and Crappy show it is. It, I mean, it matters to us because we keep track of things. But for you guys, it doesn't just it's week 11, of the college football season. Um, exactly. And and uh, I'm Crappy. Did I say this was the Carly and Crappy show? Did I'm, I'm I still don't... I'm still I there's still a little of the COVID brain fog that yeah. that led me to to analyze Texas when we were talking about Texas Tech last week. Um, well, and the funny part is that we all just kind of like let it go, too. <laughs> I, I, I was oblivious during the show. And then I, you guys were both uh, incredibly polite just to let <laughs> just to let me talk. <laughs> um, so I don't know. Let me uh, I should probably make more thorough notes up here just until this thing fades. Hi, I'm crappy <laughs> of the Carlin crappy show. That's my partner, Carla. Hi, that Carla. That me, Carla. Hello. <laughs> Not sitting in the driver's seat this week. Feeling pretty good about that. Hey, look, we're almost back to normal. Oh, uh, we're almost back to normal. Um, I'm not sure I'm going to be any any more focused um, because as we're speaking, the, the, the single biggest game of the weekend is is, is live right now. Um, yeah. we're, we're taping on Tuesday night. Uh, I'm watching the Battle for the Bricks. OU is up on Miami 24 to 14 with about two minutes left in the third quarter. I'm gonna try to not let that take away from my focus of the show much it was good luck with that yeah we'll we'll, we'll see um man last weekend uh if you're one of the folks who kind of gets tired of the same four teams in the college football playoff every year you, you had a good weekend last yes. weekend um and uh, you know we'll we'll get into how that all shook out in just a second. Uh, obviously, with the new new playoff rankings being released earlier tonight, uh, again taping on Tuesday. Yep. But um, great stuff last weekend, Carlo. What what did you, what what did you see that stood out? Well, I'll stay with the like, kind of the big slate because I ended up being a little bit more myopic. I ended up watching the 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 Georgia Tennessee game um, with some friends. Um, in a Ten- household Tennessee dual- friends, Tennessee friends, yes, Uh-oh. um, who Uh-oh. were remarkably even keeled through the whole game. Um, okay, I was pleasantly surprised by that. Um, but also there were eight children under the age of seven in the house, and so that was um, to say that I didn't have a lot of focus on the game would okay. probably be I- an understatement. Totally but understand. To be honest, I didn't need focus on that game. <laughs> like it was, it was just, it was disappointing. The game was like hyped up so much, right? And like we were. I guess we were all kind of spoiled by the fact that the um, Tennessee Alabama game was just so incredibly yeah. entertaining yeah. that this Georgia Tennessee game, I mean, yeah, the balls were up three, nothing, but then Georgia rattled off 21 straight and it was never a game after that. It's and like, like return of, of the death star, Georgia, Georgia, defense. you, you look at, you yeah. look at that and it's like, uh Oh, Oh, I don't want any part of this. Yeah. And so the game wasn't really, um, and I mean, we kept pausing the game too because people were dealing with children. So we didn't like really get into like a momentum in watching the game because mm-hmm. we put the game yep. on pause for four minutes to go. Like everybody got any more food, and you know, there's a child crying upstairs, and so it was just like we never got into a rhythm watching that game, and it was just kind of like, yeah, it was a good time with friends, but the game itself, not so much. Mm-hmm. Um, the game of the day, hands down, was Bam LSU, mm-hmm. which I wasn't mm-hmm. predicting. Um. The, that game, you know, obviously, I, I mean, whew, to go for two in the first overtime. Um, I mean, obviously, that was, I mean, that's that's Brian Kelly saying we need to end this game right now because this drags I, on. Clearly, yes. Right? Yes. Um, interesting thing, if you didn't see this, um, SEC Network's um, Richard Johnson pointed this out about that two-point play that won, won in the game. Mm-hmm. Um, that actually was the same exact play, and and he talked about this in his post game. Same exact play that Notre Dame ran against Florida State in 2014 and got called for the pick. Yeah, yeah. Um, and interesting but, that he said that he knew he would not get called for the pick this time. Right. Um, and, and I, I, I oh, did, did he explain how he knew that, or is, is this a commentary on SEC officiating, or what? I, letting them play? Did I did he elaborate? That it was a big game, and it was yeah. at home. Like you know, I don't, I don't know. Um. But yeah, it was just intriguing that he admitted that. Yes. After after the game, um, but I mean, we we that's been the knock against Brian Kelly for a long time is that he mm-hmm. can't win the big game. Yeah. Um, 
and he won the big game. It's a pretty big game. And and would have taken the fall for it because that was his call to go for two, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and so he he rolled his he you know he rolled the dice, um, gutsy call, mm-hmm. the right call, obviously, you know, and we probably would have questioned that. Um, had that play not been successful. Um, and so the the beautiful thing about Saturday, again, like you said, if you enjoy um, not seeing the same teams in the college football playoff is that we essentially eliminated both Alabama and Clemson mm-hmm. um, on the em- same. Em- emphatically. Emphatically. Um, yeah. <laughs> and, and kudos to the two of us who said, this feels like a game that Notre Dame is going to screw around and win. Um, I, I will admit that I thought, like tight game Notre Dame does does something weird at the end. That's that was the Notre Dame thing I was thinking of. Yeah. Not I'll not down it was. complete utter domination. Right. I agree. But I'll yeah, but I'll I take was, it. I'll take it. I was thinking it was gonna be a closer game too, but like I never flipped that game on. Mm-hmm. Um keeping scoreboard watch. Of course it's you know also having small child, right? We got home from the UT game yeah. and then I, we were immediately putting Ellie to bed. And so I didn't like the, the primetime games. I didn't really get to tune into those until like the start of the fourth quarter. Mm-hmm. So I missed a bunch of stuff. So my, the end of that, that night slate between what was happening with, with K state and Texas, Bama mm-hmm. LSU, and then like scoreboard watching what was going on with Notre Dame Clemson, like that was college football at its finest right oh, there, fun. you know? So it made up for the fact that the afternoon was kind of eh, mm-hmm. just okay. Mm-hmm. So, I agree. My weekend. I agree. Um, my my weekend uh, d- began at noon. Um, actually, it, it began shortly before noon. There was a, a shot that it was replayed over and over and over and over that they, they showed on um on game day of Ohio State's kicker trying to in in warmups just trying to kick field goals into the wind. And there's one that literally got to the goal line and dropped straight down out of the sky. And I'm like, oh, so. <laughs> this is going to be a problem. Yeah. Um, and Chicago, you know, in November and um, what do they call that place? It's there's a nickname for it. Um, Chicago. Right. Uh, the windy, the, the, the windy city, the yeah, windy that's city. It. Yeah. Um, essentially, Ryan Day said after the game, we, we tried passing and and found out early on that it's just not just not happening um and you know balls were fluttering i'm getting frustrated initially with receivers who aren't catching things but it's because they're 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 looking at knuckleballs and they have yeah. no idea where the ball's going um and then you're faced with the problem of playing a a defense but not not a good one but any defense if they if they know you're going to run the football right um and i i can't tell you how many times i saw northwestern with you know nine guys in the box right. it just um the 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 box that checked off for me this week in terms of of what Ohio State did was um uh, understanding how to win um in in bizarre circumstances things that are going to come up um you know again you know midwest in november that that weather can happen it can happen in columbus it can happen in ann arbor it can happen wherever um but that's that's just the the thing you have to deal with and and ohio state dealt with it so um i i was happy not to to spoil the rank spoil the rankings that you guys have known about for four days now um but i was happy that that ohio state didn't didn't get docked for that um you know, I think people recognize what uh, what difficult circumstances those were. So, uh, no style points, obviously, but again, just you know, keep making progress, keep checking off boxes, and thinking, okay, we're th- this this is this is working. So, um, I was I was pleased, uh, if not for how we got there, I was pleased with that we that we got there. Mm-hmm. Um. We have referenced, obviously, the uh, the new rankings. Um, you and I were both bothered by where Clemson uh, was placed in the first week. Uh, they were they were number four, if you recall. Um, yeah. And um, I, I, I we can take take a moment right now, Carla, and bask in the sweet redemption of being correct. <laughs> yes. Ah. Exactly. Ah. Um, and we begin with Clemson because they're tenth. Uh, this this in this week's rankings, followed by Alabama, USC, LSU, Oregon, number five, Tennessee, number four, TCU, number three, Michigan, number two, Ohio State, 
and number one, the the Death Star down in Athens, Georgia. Um, I just uh, real quick, what your what was your initial first impression? Um, Georgia, Ohio State in that order is what I anticipated. Um, mm-hmm. based off of results last week, that didn't surprise me at all. Um, I expected them to move Michigan up to number three again, like AJ said last week. Ohio State, Michigan's going to sort itself out. We yep. don't have to worry about that, so that's fine. Um, happy to see TCU moved up, but it was almost out of necessity because they're really the four kind of undefeated teams at this point, right? Right. Um, so whether or not it was like merit or whether it was the fact that like TCU is undefeated and so they're giving them the benefit of the doubt here, it's it's mm-hmm. hard to say. I didn't I didn't watch the the playoff show long enough to hear the um the committee response to that. Um. Tennessee at five, I expected Tennessee to drop out of the top four, Mm. um, but they're sitting right there and they're sitting in that, that, that lovely spot where they could be that SEC team that doesn't play in the SEC title game and still manages to find a way to sneak into the playoff. The the Mm -hmm. role that Alabama has played a number of times, Mm -hmm. if Tennessee wins out and they're sitting there and it's, this is one of those years that it feels like Georgia and Ohio state are kind of head and neck above everybody else at the moment. Mm -hmm. Um, and if that's the way that it plays out, three and four could be really interesting. Tennessee, you're not out of this. Um, you you got to win out. Um, but there's still a possibility for 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 a Tennessee team with one loss to Georgia to still sneak their way into the playoff. Um, Oregon, another interesting conversation. Win mm-hmm. out, you might end up with a Pac-12 team in the playoff for the first time in a long time. So mm-hmm. yeah. um, I, I think... You know, and, and the debate that that I did see on the on the playoff show was about whether or not if LSU runs the table and wins the SEC, can a two loss LSU team make the playoff? And the argument was, well, if they beat Georgia, they, um, at that point they would have beaten Georgia and Alabama, right? Um, um, how can you not put them in? Beat, and beat a respectable good, Old Miss team, yeah. That that's that would be tough. It that would. would be tough. You know, um, how would you leave them out at mm-hmm. that point? So so that'll be something to watch. Um, LSU's sitting right there, too, you know, mm-hmm. depending on how things shake out. Uh, TCU's got a real tough test this week. Um, yep. Michigan and Ohio State are going to play each other. Tennessee just needs to win out. It's going to be Come really on. interesting to see how this all plays out. This is a fun one. Uh, and it and it's... Uh, because of the, because of the number of variables that are, that are out there. Um, mm-hmm. You know, uh, TCU wins out. They, they've got to have a spot. They're in, yeah. Uh, Oregon wins out. I think they've got to have a spot. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, obviously, w- with with two and three playing each other at the end of the season, there's there's going to be one more spot up in that in in the top four that's that's open that that isn't now. Um, right. But it's it's, it's going to be fun to watch. I think my only quibble this week, <sighs> I. I um, and maybe I'm 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 penalizing Tennessee a little bit too much here, but I would I would have Oregon above Tennessee. Um, I just the, what they have done recently, um, and this is yeah. a thing I'll, I'll reference when we talk about their game this week. But what they have done recently, uh, it is really really good. Um, and I think at this point they are they are head and shoulders better than anybody in their conference. Um, and even with that, that, that ugly loss in the first win of the, the, the first game of the season, um, you know, that, that's, I, I, I don't think what they, what they've done since is, uh, is really impressive. So yeah, this one to keep an eye on, I guess. Um, I need let's... to do my, um, my, my weekend was so bonkers. You know, um, I, my, my, my weekend was so bonkers that I forgot to ask Carla about the weekend was so bonkers. <laughs> and it, right. because it was they were they bringing yeah. especially the the the, the, light, the night slate there was a the ton night, going on the night slate was crazy including a game that no probably nobody was watching unless you were just watching it on your scoreboard which is what i was doing and that was mm. the insanity that was smu houston mm. um smu beating houston 77 to 63 um the ap story mm. actually references this that houston basketball beat smu by a lower score 75 <laughs> to 61 in february <laughs> So whoever um, the AP writer was, kudos to you because that's a gold stat. Thank you yes, very much for putting that, that is, in your story. That is, that's spectacular. Yeah. Um, Tanner Mordecai threw nine touchdowns in the win. Nine touchdowns in the win. Um, I love this. Houston quarterback Clayton Toon had 530 yards, averaged 10 yards per completion, threw seven touchdowns, and lost. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what to tell you, kid. 
<laughs> right? Um, life, is, life is hard sometimes. Yeah. First, <laughs> the first seven drives of the game all ended in touchdowns. There was yeah. one punt in the entire game. Um, just, I mean, that was an AJ special, like served up on a platter right there mm-hmm. for you. Um, just points on points on points. And then was that the game that was on the NFL Network? Yeah. Um, I believe so, so. Yes. Yeah. So, so the NFL Network that AJ knows nothing about. Um. And, and a network that, um, you know, isn't used to seeing that many points as he and I have referenced a number of times this season. So um, NFL like network in a fans, whole weekend. Yeah. Congratulations. That, that would be an interesting thing. If if we went back and looked at like all of the NFL games, like did they add up? Mm-hmm. To the, I'm, I'm being facetious there. Um, did they add up to the number of points scored in SMU Houston? Um, also, um, in the bonkers play of the week that Kentucky beat, essentially beat Mizzou on a mm-hmm. roughing the punter call. Um, if you haven't seen that, go back and watch the highlights of that game. You should. Um, yeah, the Kentucky long snapper like snapped it over the punter's head. The punter went and chased it down and still managed to get the kickoff, but got tackled in the process. And the officials called that roughing the punter because they deemed that he stayed within the tackle boxes. Hmm. Controversial kind of decision there, but because sure. because the it was the the penalty was awarded Kentucky got to keep the football and got to run essentially the last 38 seconds off of the clock so um probably one of the more bizarre endings you've ever seen and then the score that flew under everybody's radar is the fact that Liberty beat Arkansas remember how it wasn't all that long ago that we were talking about Arkansas wanting to like be back on the national stage Uh hogs what happened Uh, the final score was 21 19 and the game really wasn't that close Arkansas scored 14 points yeah Arkansas scored 14 points in the fourth quarter like Liberty dominated that game Mm -hmm. and that's not something that you want to hear if you're a Hogs fan right now so yeah just the whole weekend up top to bottom crazy stuff but those three kind of stood out to me um there there was not a ton of craziness in Ithaca New York um but it was I'm Ah, uh, it's it's frustrating. Um, my my our Cornell Big Red Bears, uh, hosted Penn, uh, one the other of the two Ivy League leading teams that they've played in back to back weeks. Um, took a loss at home to the Quakers, uh, twenty eight twenty one. Uh, this game followed a similar pattern to that of the of the previous game, and that the loss uh at Princeton, um, Big Red was in it early, um. But, you know, there are mistakes and consistent plays uh, that force the Bears to give up ground. And and then, you know, they they turn things around and sort of made it interesting at the end. Um, that's That's been a hallmark of the last several games. Um, some of them they've been able to come back and win. Uh, the win against Brown a couple weeks ago. Um, and then you just, you, this one, you just came up a little bit, a little bit short. Um, uh, Drew, my nephew, Drew Powell, did play. Um, okay. with his high ankle sprain, he was limited, um, mostly to, to pass blocking, um, or, uh, you know, leaking out in the flat. I, I, I suspect a lot of times as a, as a decoy, um, but you know, out there as a safety valve for, uh, for quarterback Jamison Wong, um, in spite of this loss, you know, and, and I will, I will reiterate that, that, that Cornell was picked to finish last in the Ivy league again, uh, they are in an interesting position. Two games left in the season. Um, this one and at Columbia, which is sort of their their big uh in in conference rival. Uh they're in fifth place in the Ivy League. Um, but the but the two games they have left uh are are against teams that they should beat. Um they're they're both both against teams that are that are below them in the stanking, uh rankings. Um uh Dartmouth this week and and as I mentioned, Cornell uh in the in the following the, the final week of the season. So the big red could finish six and four overall on the season. Go. Um, which uh, you know, once again would continue the streak that they have established of uh beating expectations um in the football season. Is that a catch? Oh, wait, get show wait uh crappy's distracted by max i don't watching the show at the moment so i don't know i don't know what they ruled that um borderline for sure but if it's a catch uh that's a that's a no you touchdown and the domination over miami continues i'm i'm thinking that's not a catch we'll find out in just a second so (laughs) A, a finish for the big red uh at, at six and four is is possible the ruling on the field is a touchdown. <laughs> um, I'm sure. I'm sure it, it it has to bother AJ that, um, for all his his love of of a group of five football that we can't actually 
cover the November matching games because they're on Tuesdays and Wednesdays and, and, right. and all that stuff. Um, I'll use about to kick the extra point. And with that, the Bobcats are up 31 14 with uh, 11, 11 minutes left in the fourth quarter. That feels good. Um, but, but, but AJ has some other stuff to talk about this weekend as he always does. Um, and we will let the grand master of the group of five, uh, give him free reign to do the group of five after dark report. AJ, go. Good evening, everyone. And I say good evening because uh, it is always spiritually after dark. It is this week's group of five after dark report. Uh, I do want to say that like college football wide, it's kind of a, a, a butt week. There's like very few good games. Uh, I, it took me a while to like get to something where I was like, oh, okay, I would like to watch that football game. There will always be something good, but needless to say, this is not one of those great weeks. Uh, we're going to start in the American uh, because, honestly, a game that game day should have went to but didn't uh, is Tulane hosting UCF at 3.30 p.m. on ESPN2. Uh, this is the first time in 73 years that Tulane... Is, play, is a ranked team playing another AP ranked team. They have not done this since 1949. Um, Tulane has played incredibly well this year. Willie Fritz probably getting a new job uh, with a higher paycheck at the end of this one. Um, I honestly believe that Tulane has the potential to take down UCF. Uh, Tulane is 8-1. and one. They're averaging, uh, they're, they're like number 25 in yards per play. Um, they have an incredibly good EPA per play, EPA per game. Um, they're capable of doing this. UCF's offense happens to be better. And the defenses uh, for UCF is a little bit better. I do think Tulane gets up for this game. I do think that they have the capability to beat UCF at home, but I'm pretty sure the Golden Knights are going to roll here. Uh, we are going to keep it moving because, honestly, normally I would love to talk about Maction. But Maction happens while we record this show, uh, so we don't do that. Uh, if we flip over to the CUSA, the only game I really want to talk about is Charlotte and Middle Tennessee State. And the only reason I want to talk about that is that Middle has a very, very good opportunity to go bowling. There are uh, three games left. They are uh, they're four and five, I believe. And their three games left are Charlotte, FAU, and FIU. Uh, FIU and Charlotte are real, real bad. Uh, Charlotte fired their coach. FIU should probably fire their coach. Um, this is highly plausible that Middle has a chance to go out and take down either one of those teams. Uh, so go ahead, Middle, get it done, and go to the Bahamas Bowl, because that's probably where you would end up. Uh, the other game that I want to talk about from the CUSA is FAU-FIU, and that's because this is Shula Bowl. Um, this is the like su Southern Florida G5 Bowl of the year every year. These two are rivals. They do not like each other. Um, I do think this is an opportunity for FIU to potentially get one over on FAU, but FAU is a much, much better team. They are not the high-flying offenses of Lane Kiffin. Willie Taggart has more or less slowed those offenses down, uh, but this is an opportunity for them to uh, – Get, this is an opportunity for FAU uh, to get a, a, a decent enough win and move forward in their uh, quest for bowl eligibility. Um, we need to keep it moving, though, because the big one, though, the Mountain West, don't worry about the Mountain West. Do not perceive the Mountain West. It's like their better teams are playing their not as good teams. Uh, the problem with the Mountain West this year is that up and down, it's not very good. Um, Fresno... It, when Jake Hayner it plays is the class of the conference, uh, but he didn't play for a bit because he was hurt, and it hurt Fresno quite a bit. Um, so I would uh, keep my eye on the Sand Bowl. Uh, San Jose plays San Diego State this year. Uh, it, they're playing on. Uh, let me go. Let me go find that real real fast. Uh, they play. I hit the button to go see it, and then I didn't because technology confounds me from time to time. Uh, they're on FS1 at 10.30. So there's your late game. Just keep an eye on Sand Bowl. Um, Brett Brennan 
is playing really well. San Diego State is one win away from bowl eligibility. San Jose State got bowl eligible last week. Um, so I think this is an opportunity for San Jose State uh, to really put one over on their Southern brethren. Um, San Diego State is playing a former safety at quarterback. Uh, so, uh, you know, their offense is debatable at any given time. Uh, San Jose State, I expect to roll there. Uh, what we're going to do, though, is this is Pac-12 showcase weekend. Because for whatever reason, the Pac-12 scheduling gods took a look at the schedule for everybody else and said, everybody else is playing a crap schedule this week. Go, 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 go. And so they put all of their good games. So we are going to cover five Pac-12 games this week. It is a true Pac-12, not after dark, but after dark situation. Uh, We're going to start at 3.30 on Saturday on the Pac-12 network, which means I'll see it. You probably won't, but I'll see it. Uh, Arizona State at Washington State. This should be the 10.30 night game. This should 100% be the game that tucks you into bed. Um, Arizona State, like, sneaky okay. They almost got UCLA last week. I almost went to bed. And this is, like, a couple weeks in a row now where I've started to go to bed and then some dumb stuff happens and then I stay up too late. I regret nothing. But uh, Arizona State almost jumped up and got UCLA. They got close. UCLA was able to recover the onside kick and close it out. Um, Wazoo, not a terrible team this year. Um, I do think that they have the capability to uh, just kind of run up the score on Arizona State. But keep an eye on this one on the scoreboard. And if you need to, um, find a VPN. Uh, the Pac-12 network is free to the rest of the world, but not America. Um, on Fox, 7 p.m., this is the big one. It is Nick's Bowl. Uh, Washington at Oregon. The scoreboard does not have enough numbers. It just doesn't. Neither of these teams has a remotely decent defense, and both of these teams know how to score a ton of points. Turn this game on and turn your brain off. Um, I expect Oregon to come out and win. I do think that Oregon's defense can get up when they have to, um, but Washington uh, does not necessarily have the, the firepower to keep up with Oregon, so I expect Oregon to roll there. So, Next up on the uh, Pac-12 network, 9 p.m., we have Cal at Oregon State. Um, Cal almost beat USC. Like, almost. Not really, but almost. Uh, Oregon State, still like a feisty team. They almost got Oregon, or Washington, excuse me, in Seattle. Like, this is a feisty game between two teams that are better than their records, in my opinion, show. Um, so keep an eye on the scoreboard on this one. Again, Pac-12 is free to the world, not to America. Uh, on ESPN at 10 p.m., we have Stanford, Utah. This is your nightcap. This is this is the one you just, you know, open it up on your phone and just, you know, get a blanket, pull it up over the shoulders too, right? Really dig in there. Really get into the, you know, sort of space um, and, and just let it tuck you in. This game is going to be slow. It's going to be prodding. And it's going to have, you know, the sort of slow drum that you really want from a, like, a, just a nice... It's like, imagine if a Big Ten game happened at night. That's what this is. And it'll just tuck you in gently after all the points in offense that you watched earlier in the day. And finally, at 10.30 p.m., if you would like the opposite of that game, Arizona at UCLA on Fox, 10.30 p.m., um, Arizona, not a terrible team. UCLA c- can be dumb from time to time. <laughs> I expect this game to be as dumb as possible. And because of that, you should absolutely keep your eyes on this game. This one might be worth staying up late. Um, UCLA's defense is fine. Um, they fully expect to just outscore you. It is very much a, we're going to score more points than the other team, like, as a philosophy. And as part of that, uh, dumb things can happen. See last week when they almost lost to Arizona State. Um, Keep your eyes on this game. It's pretty good. Um, And that has been your group of five Pac-12 After Dark report. Mostly Pac-12 After Dark report. Um, We'll see you this weekend. Have fun. Keep your eyes on it. Thank you, AJ. Um, going to be a lot of fun, as always. Um, I, I don't want to suggest that our slate, the, the games that Carla, that you and I are going to talk about, isn't as exciting um, as perhaps it has been. But we're not we're not picking thirty seven games this week. 
Um, which is good. Thanks for everybody who listened to the marathon of the show last I, week. <laughs> I know, I know. Uh, we, uh, you know, we can we will take requests. Like if you have a long drive somewhere <laughs> and you want, you know, if you need like a three hour show, we could probably pull that together. Um, in fact, we we talked uh, uh, while not recording last weekend about maybe one week we just do all the games, just go, yeah. just go through the list, boom, 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 boom. Um, see how quickly we can do them. Make like one word predictions or something like that. I don't, yeah, I don't know. Um, I still like. I still also like the idea of doing an all haiku show, but maybe not in November. That that feels more like a September shtick. I think. Yeah, yeah, like a week zero kind of thing where yeah, we don't know yeah. anything. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, uh, seven games, quality perhaps over quantity, maybe, maybe not. I don't know. Um, but this will this still is, be a big show for us in like previous this, seasons. Yeah, it would be. This would be. This would be a huge show. <laughs> um, I would be looking at this going, "Oh my God, what are we doing?" Uh, and I have learned to say, eh, it's fine. <laughs> uh, we begin at noon Saturday on CBS, Missouri at number five, Tennessee. Tennessee is favored by 21 and a half points. The AJ Fund Index is 56 and a half. Um, is this a get right game for Tennessee? I think so, but yeah. don't let, but like, don't let the record fool you. Like Mizzou However. is not as bad as usual. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, the last five games, they've, they have wins over South Carolina and Vandy, and they were right in games with Kentucky, Florida, and Georgia, mm -hmm. right? And so their last five, have they've been super competitive. Um, but, you know, here's the thing. Mizzou's offense is nowhere close to Tennessee's offense. The game yeah. is in Neyland. This yeah. is not a look-ahead game for Tennessee. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think this is totally a a get-right game for the for the Vols, Hendon Hooker, and the UT offense. I'll, I'll take the Vols at home here. But um, don't, uh, don't be surprised if Mizzou can maybe make this a game early. Um, mm -hmm. because like I said, this Mizzou is not the punching bag of the SEC right now. Um, right. I, I, you know, they, I think they could make this game interesting for a while, but the Vols are clearly the better team here and will win at home. Okay. Um, I mean, it, it is a tough spot for Missouri, but you, you do, you have to like, uh, what they've accomplished. Um, yeah. they, they play Georgia as tough as anybody has all season. Um, and that was a few weeks ago. They, they thumped pretty good South Carolina team, mm -hmm. uh, in Columbia. Um, just uh, two weeks ago, I think. Um, so I mean, it, that's it is a respectable Tigers team, uh, that goes into Tennessee. I just, I, I mean, Tennessee would have to have a, a a pretty significant hangover from from last weekend to lose this. Um, right. and 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 there could be a chance that that's that is the case. So, I, I'm I, I don't have any reservations picking Tennessee. I, that that's clearly um the, the the pick here. But uh again, you know, Missouri is is tougher than the record would indicate. Um, and I think this is this is a decent game at least for a little while. Um, so maybe check that out on noon. Or if you don't want to do that, you can go to a game that only Big Ten fans could love at noon on ESPN two. Purdue at number twenty one Illinois. Illinois is favored by six and a half points. AJ, um, earmuffs. I don't want you to hear this. AJ fun index of 44 and a half points. <laughs> um, Carla, what do you see here? And unfortunately, I have to say, hammer the under on this one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, this feels like a like a, a super low scoring uh a Big Ten West kind of game. Mm -hmm. Um, despite the loss to Sparty last weekend, which I I don't think any of us really saw coming. No. Um the line I still control the Big Ten West. Mm -hmm. right like it's still theirs to lose um I that's think, a I mean, really a weird creep. thing that's a really it weird, really thing, weird in my, thing in my headphones bert, right now yeah bert still has things going at shambana right like it's mm -hmm. just um chase brown running back chase brown is just like he's a beast he's running yeah. all over the big 10 he's got 1350 yards ish um right now um mm -hmm. and with still two games to play right and Purdue's kind of fallen off in their last two games. Yes. Um, yeah. You know, I mean, Aiden O'Connell has a boatload of yards in the air, almost 2,500 on the season, but his touchdown to interception ratio is 15 to 10. That's not good. Mm -hmm. Um, And they've scored less than 30 points per game mm -hmm. to show for it. Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure exactly what's going on with Purdue. The Illinois defense is legit. Iowa's defense was able to ground Purdue to a halt last week. Yeah. I think that's going to be the difference here. The the Illini defense is good, all, you know, right up there with the uh, the Iowa defense. I think that's mm -hmm. going to be a problem for Purdue this week again. Mm -hmm. Illinois playing at home. 
Um, I, th- I think the line and I are the pick here, but yeah, this is like, this is a dumb, like 17, 10 kind of game. So yeah, like <laughs> hammer the under. <laughs> uh, it's, it is, it is um, uh, the, in the Joe Chiller days, they, they called uh, Purdue basketball on grass. So we have basketball on grass versus the, the caveman, big 10 football. Um, the, the, the sparse AJ fund index would suggest that the cavemen will have the upper hand on Saturday. Um, Illinois defensive stats. Um, and I, I did not realize this until I, I checked first in the country in scoring defense first in the country in yardage allowed per game mm-hmm. that suggests the same. Um, Illinois here is the, is, is the pick, uh, clearly, clearly, uh, we take you now to three thirty. Um, CBS number nine, Alabama at number 11, Ole Miss. Bama is favored by 11 and a half points. The AJ fund index, but a, a very nice 63 and a half. Carla, has there ever been a, a ranked unranked matchup this high that has meant less in the history of college football? That's a great question. <laughs> yeah. I mean, both these teams are, um, I mean, does, does Ole Miss still have a path to get to the SEC title game? No, maybe I. I, uh, maybe. I don't know. Can they? Can they? If they win this game, can they still? Can they win the West? I think they can, um, because they only have one loss on the season. Well, and that's to LSU, and LSU has two losses. But I'd have to do. I'd have to go back and double double check to see if Ole Miss still has a way to get to the um, SEC title game. If they they would. I mean, they they need help. I, I let's. Yeah, I think I, so. I think I think that's a good safe thing to say. So. Yeah, it's a very bizarre kind of situation, and it, it, so Alabama, despite losing, had more yards and more first downs mm-hmm. against LSU, but they couldn't score. And yeah. when was the last time we said that about an Alabama team? They settled for field goals until the fourth quarter. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, that's just not something that we're used to from a yeah. tight offense, and they're still having problems with with penalties. Um, nine for ninety-two against LSU that's not going to win you football games and that's again not something that we're used to seeing from Alabama um Ole Miss yes they're eight and one four of those eight wins are against non-conference cupcake opponents Mm -hmm. um they've played in a lot of close SEC games they beat Texas A&M by three Kentucky by three and lost big to LSU here we are sitting in like what week 11 of the season and I'm sitting I'm going to ask the question is Ole Miss good? That's not a question we should still be asking by week 11. <laughs> right? Right. But we don't right. know. We don't know. Um, mm-hmm. We'll find out here. Um, is this a get right game for, for Alabama? Um, maybe. It's going to be a tough ask. Alabama has to play clean here. Ole Miss coming off of a bye. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and Kiffin off of a bye. That's, and, and, and the Rebels are playing at home. Mm-hmm. That's a tough ask for an Alabama team that is not a tr- typical Alabama team. I'm going to I'm going to say Alabama wins this game because I still think Bryce Young is the key here. Mm-hmm. Um the experience that he has is going to be able to find a way to win this football game. Um but I think this game is close. I I I think um I think Ole Miss is going to put a scare in him. Um, and, and is going to keep this game close up until the very end. And, you know, we're all going to be scratching our heads about Alabama for, for another week, I think. So uh, is, uh, what, what is the deal with Alabama? I mean, it has, it has talent dropped off. I mean, you know, the, the, the starting quarterback is the, the current Heisman trophy holder. Um, you know, so I, you don't think necessarily it's him. Um, right. I'm trying to put a finger on what what it is because there are uh, the scoring defense. I, I've not looked up any of these stats, but just uh, just kind of uh, knee jerk reactions. Um, Alabama scoring defense is not good um, by Alabama standards. Um, Alabama, well, uh, red zone, uh, yeah. red zone offense, not good um, by Alabama standards. And then uh, th- there's just this bizarre thing. The, the 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 tide teams are always so well coached, okay. um, and and that manifests itself in 
not not taking stupid penalties, not making stupid mistakes. And this team has done that and, and done it all year. Yeah. Um. In in most games, they're they're better. You know, they're 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 good enough that they overcome. It's not a big deal. But you know, it, it it's such a weird thing to see, and I'm not sure what it is. That that last point is the most interesting thing to me because that that doesn't feel like it should be a variable. Um. Mm-hmm. Because it hasn't been in you know in in Saban's time, uh, in Tuscaloosa, his teams have regardless of of who's playing or what the talent level is or whatever whatever else is going on they they don't do that stuff and this team does and i'm not sure what that's about um i'm not sure how that manifests itself this weekend um but if it does if it does um i old miss is good enough to to take advantage um i i think you know it the the the, the the most fun thing here is you know kind of speculating about does does Lane Kiffin go to Auburn this in the off season, um, or you know will will Saban snap and just and and punch Lane in the face at the you know, after the game is over or something? I, I I I I mean Alabama is the is the pick, I guess. Yeah. Um, but I, I this this game could easily go sideways and then. I don't know. The other thing I did not look up because I just like, when was the last time that Alabama had three losses? That's a great in question. The, in the regular season. Right. Um, yeah. Could, it could happen. I don't think it will, but it, but it could happen. Um, and then there's lots of questions about, about what's, what's going on down there. How would this sound? An Alabama <laughs> appearance in the Alamo Bowl. It just feels weird, doesn't it? Wow. Wow. But that's mm. the thing. We could be looking at that. If Alabama loses this game, we could absolutely be looking at that. What uh, what's the one in, in Mobile? Is that I um, I what did it send Alabama several, to that one? There's several several games in Mobile. I don't know. I we'll don't we'll know. get we'll get to we'll get to full games. Yeah. We, we, we'll, we'll get there. Also at 3 30. Um the the intrigue of of Alabama and Old Miss is is off the charts. Um this game's going to be a lot more fun to watch. Maryland at number 14 Penn State. Uh the Nits are favored by 10 points. The AJ Fund Index is a 59. I'd be tempted to go over maybe. Um anyway, Carla, uh how's Penn State going to do this weekend? Well, so the first thing I need to say is as I cannot even begin to explain how happy I was that Indiana was not Heartburn Central. Yes. Um, <laughs> can, the fact I that I had that. no concerns about that game whatsoever once I started watching the score. Of course, I did make the joke when I walked into the Tennessee party of where the second screen was so that I could watch Penn State Indiana and they all right. just rolled their eyes at me. Um <laughs> anyhow, um Penn State's offense ran all over indiana um yeah. these two freshman running backs katron allen and nick singleton i mean they are legit we we when, when they were discovered in week three um and kind of had their breakout game um i just kind of had the sense that that was going to be a game changer for this for the nits offense and it has been mm-hmm. um and they needed it uh last weekend um they combined for 150 yards and four touchdowns i mean that's significant change to your offense to yes. be able to have that kind of ground game. Um, defense played well, six sacks, um, right? Maryland, I picked Maryland last week, right, uh, to, to get their first win over Wisconsin. Maryland dealt with the same weather issues that your Bucks dealt with in Chicago. Yep. Um, and so Bucky jumped out to a 17-0 lead. And, and you know, I mean, Maryland, Talia is the key to the Maryland offense. and. Yes when Talia can't throw the football because he's having the same problem that your bucks had punting Mm -hmm. um, the Maryland offense is pretty much non-existent and that's exactly what happened. Um, They had fewer than 200 yards in the game. That's not, you're not going to win a football game, even in the big 10 with those kinds of numbers. Um, So on a clean track, I mean, Penn state secondary needs to be ready. The game's in happy Valley. I, this is a, this is a Penn state win. I don't know if they win by 10. I hope they win by 10. Um, but I mean, Talia is a legit quarterback, and you yes. have to be prepared for that. But the whole key to the to a Nittany Line win here is don't let him throw to open receivers. And mm-hmm. if you can do that, the same thing's going to happen to the Maryland offense as happened last week up in Madison. So, um, because Maryland's kind of one dimensional on offense, it's Talia or bust. So, yep. um, 
So stop, stop Talia and, um, and you're in good shape. So yes, of course I'm taking the Nets at home. You know how you stop a good offense? You don't let them get the ball. Yeah. And, and, and for the first time in several years, Penn state's in a position to do that uh, with, uh, with Singleton and Allen. Um, I, I am not at all happy with the, the Penn state has, has two tailbacks that good, but that's my problem um, and they're freshmen. On, on Saturday. <laughs> Yes, thank you. They're freshmen. They're going to be here forever. Yes. God. Um, it is Maryland's problem on Saturday. Uh, and, and it, you know, the, the fact that they can do that, um, nobody can be happier about that than Sean Clifford, who uh, doesn't have to run for his life right. uh, every single play of every single game because he can hand the ball off and, and good things are going to happen. Um, that's going to happen on Saturday. Uh, Penn State's going to win this at home, and I I think uh, by by more than ten is 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 what my would guess be. Um, at seven, uh, good nighttime slate this this weekend. <laughs> yes, it is at seven on Fox. Number twenty five Washington at number six Oregon. The Ducks are favored by thirteen and a half. The AJ Fun Index <sighs> seventy two and a half points. New record for the season. The new record for the season, um, and perhaps short lived. Um, <laughs> is we'll we'll get to that. What do you think about this one? So, like, yeah, like you said, the night slate. Okay, so Saturday night, make yourself a bunch of popcorn, get mm. your beverages ready, order in pizza, um, and just plan on like sacking out on the couch because we've got like three really, really, really good games happening Saturday night at the same time. Um, this one's the most interesting quarterback battle. Yes. Uh, Michael Penix Jr. versus Bo Nix. Sign me up. All right. Um, I mean, <laughs> both of these offenses are putting up about 500 yards per game. Neither team really plays defense. Um, I am tempted to say take the over on that ridiculous fun index. Yes. Um, Washington's been in three straight relatively close games after dropping two in a row. Um, other than that close game against Wazoo in like late September, Mm -hmm. Um, the Ducks have been winning comfortably after that season opening loss against Georgia. As AJ mentioned last week, I think very astutely, don't judge the Ducks by that opening season loss at Georgia. Yeah. Because the Ducks didn't know, they didn't know what to do with Bo Nix mm -hmm. is the first time, you know, and now that they figured it out, Bo Nix might be one of the best quarterbacks in the country right now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, just playing really, really well. The Ducks are playing at Autzen at home. Um, this all spells an Oregon win for me and an entertaining as hell game. Um, yep. So settle in for this one, but um, quack, quack, Ducks win. <laughs> a thing I think is true, and, and I was hinting at this when we were talking about the rankings. Um, besides Georgia, the best team in the country over the last month is Oregon. Yeah. Um. TCU maybe because they've pulled out some wins and they've played more ranked opponents, but and and we'll and we'll talk about that. I, yeah. I I I'm 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 docking TCU a little bit because of how they win, which yeah, agreed. I'm so I'm splitting hairs, but um the the Bo the Bo Nix farewell tour now that they've understand who they have and and what what they do with him, uh netting over forty points a game uh for the season if you set aside that that first one that you referenced, um. The uh, the fight in Mike's um, uh, again, uh, Mike, Michael Penix uh, will make this a stupid fun game to watch for yep. the first half, maybe a little bit longer, I think. But but overall, um, the Oregon's way too much, uh, way more than 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 Washington can handle. Um, so I, I think uh, they they end up winning this one, even if it's, you know, 45, 32 or something like that. Um, or more. Yeah, <laughs> or more. Be. Um the, the Ducks will will win this one and I think uh fairly comfortably. Um did someone someone mentioned TCU uh, at 7:30 on ABC. Number 4 TCU visits number 18 Texas. Texas is favored by a touchdown. The AJ Fun Index is 64 and a half points. What you got? Um Hornitos are trying to go 5 for 5 and meeting ranked opponents this year. Mm -hmm. Um but they're facing a Texas team that just really feels like, I mean, every year we have the conversation is Texas back. And I think <laughs> like for the first time, it kind of feels like the answer to that question is yes. Um, teetering, it, teetering. It, it, we're getting closer yes. to being able to say yes. Uh -huh. and, and that's all because of Quinn Ewers. Um, 
you know, I, I said that, you know, it feels like this Texas team is on the rise for reals this time. Mm -hmm. Um, as long as Quinn Ewers can stay healthy. Um, that being said, Max Dugan still has to be in the conversation as one of the best quarterbacks in the country right now. 24 yep. touchdowns, just two picks on the year. I mean, that's crazy. Um, the frogs have been resilient. Uh, they haven't won easily. They, they keep on having to figure out ways to, to win games. Um, you know, the final score, um, last week or Texas's final score last week against Kansas state doesn't really show what happened in the game. They were dominant. They built a 21 point lead in the first half. Um, so this is a Texas team, a TCU team that's had to like come back from deficits, a Texas team that when Quinn Ewers is on is arguably right up there as one of the best teams in the big 12. Mm. Um, to me, the big question is, is yes, Texas is Quinn Ewers, but Texas is also B. John Robinson. Yeah. And can the Horny Toads defense slow down Robinson to try to make Texas be one dimensional? I don't think anybody has really done that well this year. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, facing a Texas team. Um, I'm concerned that, you know, with, with, with the Horned Toads kind of being cardiac kids coming back late in games, I'm not right. sure Texas is going to give them that opportunity. If they, mm -hmm. if they get down too much, I don't know if they're going to be able to bounce back. I still really, really, really want t uh, TCU to be in the conversation nationally, at least mm -hmm. until we get through the big 12 title game. Mm -hmm. I don't think we're going to end up with an all purple uh, big 12 title game now, because I think, um, you know, Texas now holds the tiebreaker with K-State. So yeah. um, so this could be a preview of the Big 12 title game. Um, we might get a rematch of this in just a couple of weeks. So um, for now, I'm picking with my heart and saying TCU, but I think this is a game Texas can definitely win at home. Um, and if and if Texas plays well, um, I think they can I think they can steal this game from TCU, but I'm gonna I'm gonna say I I really want to see TCU still be in the playoff mix around um championship time. So um mm -hmm. so I'll say horny toads, but very, very, very hesitantly. Mm, okay. Okay. Um with 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 the brand new uh playoff rankings, um TCU has reached Texas Kryptonite level. The Longhorns have not beaten a top five team in twelve years hmm. tcu of course is number four hmm and, and i think i think they're not going to do it again on saturday night of, of all the superlatives you can toss around when talking about the horny toads um here's the one that matters most and this is i, I reference this when talking about ohio state um uh what why Action's but, happening. Hold on. Um, there's action happening. Um, short of the first down, though. After a penalty, oh, you've had uh second and eleven, uh, in the red zone, and there was like a reverse hook and ladder thing that looked really impressive. Ended up gaining only um seven yards. Seven yards. Third and four coming up. Um, OU is up thirty-one twenty-one with six minutes left. Um. TCU knows how to win. Mm -hmm. And that's that is that that's it's not it's not a stat that shows up anywhere except for wins and losses. Um, but they they have a sense of of how to do it. Uh if they get down to Texas, um, and to the point where Texas can just hand the ball off and hand the ball off and hand the ball off, yeah, that's that's gonna be a problem because then um this is what we, we talked about in Penn State, Maryland. You don't if you if the great offense can't do anything if it's sitting on the on the bench um right. i just i, I tcu is going to find a way to do this um texas is getting close texas is getting better i'm not going to say texas is back yet um but i i think this is a this is a game for tcu to win to, uh, uh. could not complete could not complete a pass in the end zone 6 minutes left Fourth and four, I assume I use going to kick a field goal here. Um, TCU gets it done in Austin. That's that's what I see. Uh, we said the AJ Fund Index of 72 and a half points for Washington and Oregon was the, the season record so far. Yes. <laughs> Let me introduce you to North Carolina <laughs> at Wake Forest at 730 uh, Saturday night on ESPN2. If you don't want to watch like Super consequential football. 
not worried about that. Field goal's good. 34-21 of you with uh, 614 left again. Number 15, North Carolina at Wake Forest. Wake Forest is favored by three and a half points for some reason. The AJ Fun Index. <clears throat> 77 and a half points. <laughs> um, I, it, Carly, is there any reason why we should not just all watch this game on Saturday night? Just, <laughs> uh, just, just because. Should we go live on Twitter spaces and all just watch the glory that is Carolina wow. Wake Forest? <laughs> wow. We might need to do that. We might have to do that. Um, So, this is the ACC game that actually kind of feels like it should have been a Big 12 game, right? <laughs> because <laughs> because we've we, how many years have we talked about the Big 12 just like defense optional Big 12, right? Right. And we just talked about a game that defense, a Big 12 game is going, like defense is going to be consequential in that Big 12 game. Mm, true. This ACC game, yeah, forget it. Uh, mm. No defense being played at all in this game. Um, I also am a little bit intrigued by the uh, the line in this game, like mm-hmm. you were. Um, I mean, the wheels just kind of seem to be falling off at Wake. Um, Which is what someone suggested last week. <clears throat> yeah, um, it's 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 not it's not good. Um, you know, after eight eight turnovers against Louisville, and it didn't. I mean, it got better. We didn't have eight turnovers, but it was still um, not a very clean performance um, against NC State last week. Um, but here's the thing, and we know how we hate this, right? Who is Carolina's leading rusher? Oh, it's going to be the quarterback. It's going to be the quarterback. Yes, quarterback Drake May is also the heels leading rusher. And we all mm, together cringe. sigh, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, yeah. So here's the thing. If Sam Hartman can just like get over his recent spate of turnovers, um, the wake defense might be just enough. And I kind of laugh when I say wake defense, because it's not really a thing, but, <laughs> but the wake defense might be just enough of a difference here to give the demon Deacons the edge, which is mm-hmm. why I guess the line is three and a half. Um, so it's the ACC, the, the AJ fun index is that stupid. Um, I'm going to say something stupid's going to happen and wake's going to win this game um, okay. just to like mess up the ACC even further than it's already messed up. So sure. Why not wake? Um, but yeah, again, remember how I said popcorn and pizza and like beverages and like all just settle things. in yeah. like yeah. all of the things just settle in beanbag chair, night. just sort of sit back and yep. yeah, the, with Have the bowl multiple of popcorn, screens going because the you're going bowl to need of popcorn like, on your, on your belly. And yes. then you just kind of shovel it in. Shovel it in your mouth. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Exactly. Mm-hmm. That's like Saturday it. night with points. I I we don't do a lot of of actually looking back on on and reflecting on the stuff we said a week ago because um that would ultimately be depressing. But um hey, we got Notre Dame right. Although I did. think we both we officially did. picked Clemson, but eh, we, we were right. We That's said that enough. Notre Dame could pull that off. We were we were yeah, we enough. were we were totally right. Um there was audible scoffing last week when I said Wake was a mess and wouldn't beat NC State on the road. Audible, audible scoffing. Guess what? They're, they're not going to beat Carolina at home either. I'm just, I'm just, just telling you that right now. Boys and girls, you can hear the Carlin Crappy Show on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google, and a variety of other podcasting hosts. You can watch us on YouTube or on the show's Facebook page. If you like us, please subscribe, rate, and review. If you don't, mind your own damn business. Uh, and be sure to come back next week uh, when Crappy will be sure to gloat about any audible scoffing that happened while, <laughs> while we were making our picks. Um, <laughs> Carla, any final thoughts from you? Just two very quick things this yes. week. Um 3.30 Eastern ESPN 3. I wish I could be there, but I can't because I'm going to be driving back from a wedding in Indiana. Um, but Charlotte at middle. Um, Blue mm-hmm. Raiders are home for the first time in a month. Um, in a month? Wow. Been, yeah. Yeah, they've been on the road. They had a bye week, and then they've been on the road for – for. Um, yeah, they only have four home games this year, which is weird. Um, it's just kind of the way the schedule worked out that, mm-hmm. because because their other game was at Miami. Um, 
that worked out well for us. Um, True. Yeah. True. Middle Middle still needs two bowl two wins for bowl eligibility after they lost last week at Louisiana mm-hmm. Tech. Um, this should be one of them. Um, Charlotte yes. not very good, so uh, Blue Raiders need to to get this win at home. Um, and then something that you will probably be a little bit more interested in watching because yes, I am still enamored with the Big Twelve. Um, if you have a fourth screen available on Saturday night, Ooh, um, I can. It, it'll be probably be my phone. No, yeah. I've got that little TV downstairs. Ooh, so, okay. so if you have a fourth screen available, nine, number 19 K-State at Baylor um, at 7 Eastern on FS1. Um, Bears have a pretty good run defense, and, and the Powercats have leaned pretty heavily as of late on their ground game. Mm-hmm. Um, so this is one that like K-State has to win this game on the off chance that Texas loses to TCU. Um, mm-hmm. Because if K-State can keep winning and Texas loses a game, that would potentially put K-State back into the Big 12 title game. So this is a game that K-State really, really, really needs to win. It's not a great matchup for them, though. And this is a Baylor team that just got a big win last week at Oklahoma. Um, so this game could be super intriguing. But unfortunately, there's just so much other stuff going on on Saturday night that it's probably going to fall off the radar. Um, so <laughs> scoreboard, watch this one. If things go out of control in the other games and, and they're they not could. all that interesting, and they could, um, keep this one on the flip because I think this is going to be a super intriguing under the radar Big 12 game. Okay. Okay. Um, you, you mentioned uh, the potential for bowl eligibility for middle. Um, we mentioned last week, uh, we, there are two teams that are kind of on bowl eligibility watch, uh, for, for the, the official Carlin crappy show bowl eligibility watch. Uh, first team was UConn. They yes. got their win against UMass. Um, if I remember correctly, they're still a win away from yes. eligibility. They play Liberty this weekend. Not, it's not, not happening. No. Um, I I hate to to root against Connecticut's bowl eligibility, but their final game of the season is Army. Um, AJ points out that that's uh that you know that that um Army could be looking ahead to uh to the to the Navy game. I, just there's all kinds of things could happen. I personally would have to would have to pull for Army in that game, but. Um, you, UConn still, it, it's, it, that's, that's a, that is a possible win for them without question. And, and that they could get there, um, for sure. The other one, and we've been talking about this all season. If I remember correctly, Carla, the Kansas Jayhawks are going bowling. Yes, they are. Um, so what would happen if, if, if Kansas, I have no idea what the tie-ins, if there are any that, that exist, Kansas and Connecticut, play each other Ooh. in the Bahamas Bowl. I like it. I do too. I like it. Um, and I, I, you know, people, it's like, oh, they play in a little high school stadium. It's like, dude, it's the Bahamas. I mean, right. Doesn't matter. what's not, what's not to like? Right. It's That's like, I mean, the, if the you're not going to win that game, but like, yeah. it'd be a great experience for both of them. Yes. I, I, a week in the Bahamas. I mean, you you could have to go, play a bowl game in mobile alabama <laughs> come on i mean or this detroit is detroit in january or, De- the end of or detroit yes yes Go i think that would be that would be that would be a fantastic thing uh my other final thoughts um with four minutes left ou is knocking on the door of the red zone once again uh second and eight curtis Rourke hands off to the up back who is stuffed for no gain um Four minutes remaining in the game. Uh, no, you has a third down coming up and, pro- and an easy field goal if we can't convert the first uh, in the red zone. Up 34-21. It appears as though my Bobcats will uh, will hold their, their lead atop the uh, Mid-American Conference East um, and set up some... So I'm, there, there's going to be a lot of Tuesday football watching for me because, uh, because OU's in this. Um, for the to to get to the Mac title game, um, with uh with a, with a couple more wins, we will see how it goes. Um, with that, Carla, thank you. Yes, once again, as always. Yes, thank you. Um, fun to do a regular show for the first time in a while. I, I know, <laughs> I know. I don't, I don't. Uh, no, no COVID. Um, one of my eyeballs almost fell out of my head a couple of days ago. So I'm still the, the, the health problems. I think this is just a, a thing that happens when you're 56. So Carla, um, don't, don't, don't age past 50. That would be my, I don't know how Let's you do accomplish I that. that. I, I don't know how you accomplish <laughs> that, but that's, it's, um, 
I don't actually believe that, but it's it it, 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 it it's been annoying for the last couple yeah. of weeks for sure. Um, thank you guys as always. Uh, we uh, we appreciate you watching, listening, doing all the things you do. Thank you to AJ uh, for yet another killer group of five after dark report. Um, watch his games, watch our games, watch your games, watch college football because. I, Guys, there's not that much time left in the season. Yeah. Watch watch as much as you possibly can. Um with that, uh cheers, Carla, to you. Cheers. Cheers to AJ in abstention. Cheers to all of you folks watching. Beat Miami and beat Michigan. See you next week, guys. <laughs>